Well, good morning, my friends. I'm so glad you could be with me today as we study God's Word together in the Unfolding the Word ministry. We're in the midst of a verse-by-verse -verse examination of the book of Daniel. Today, I want to pick up our reading at the last verse of chapter 11 and also the first verse of chapter 12, pushing on toward the end of our study. And he shall pitch his palatial tents between the sea and the glorious mountain, and yet he shall come to his end with none to help him. And at that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as has never been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name is found written in the book. We've just finished looking over these last couple of days at five facts about the Antichrist in this 70th week, the tribulation period. In a way, some bad news, important news for us to understand, but, but lots of things coming that are not good pictures, not good things for the world in general. Today, at the end of the 11th chapter and into the 12th chapter, God gives us four promises. I didn't read all of them, all of the verses today. We're not going to look at all four today but he gives some promises to his people. Uh, the bad news gets now mixed with some good news. <laughs> so join with me now as we begin to unfold the good news parts of this. Although one could say all of the word of God is good news, which is what the word gospel means. All of it's good news. All of it tells us truth in the face of error, truth in the face of darkness. But here's some positive upbeat things that will happen. At the end of the 11th chapter, after describing all of these terrible things of the 70th week, we read this statement, and yet he will come to his end with none to help him. What's the promise? God is going to miraculously defeat this antichrist, this capstone ruler in Gentile human history, this one who leads such a terrible persecution against his people. He will defeat that one miraculously. And the 12th chapter opens up by making it plain to us that it's the angel Michael who will be a key ingredient in how God comes about or goes about defeating the Antichrist. He is the one who leads the angels of God in this battle. Listen to these words out of the book of Revelation, the very last book in the scripture, that addresses the same time frame that the end of the 11th chapter, the beginning of the 12th chapter of Daniel does. Chapter 19 of the book of Revelation, beginning in verse 19. And I saw the beast, meaning the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who is sitting on the horse and against his army. They're meaning they're gathering to do war against the Messiah. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, and who worshipped its image. And these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. And the rest of the slain by the word of God, by that came from the or the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse, and all of the birds were gorged on their flesh. All right. Yet he shall come to his end. <laughs> the defeat of the Antichrist is as certain as all of the other pieces unfolding in God's plan of history. God is not suggesting that certain things will happen. He is telling us what will happen. But he's also telling us that this Antichrist, who seemed to be so successful, the poster child for prosperity, uh, this one who everything he did seemed to be successful, his rebellion against God won't be, and he will be defeated and done away with. He and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. Uh, I didn't talk about the false prophet because it's not really the focus of the book of Daniel, but there's a cohort who the enemy uses with the Antichrist to help deceive mankind. The book of Revelation tells us much more about that. At any rate, 
It was at a time when everything seemed to be going his way, when all of the armies of the earth were gathering with him, that he is defeated. But make no mistake, this time leading to that point is the worst time in history. Now, we've had a lot of bad times in human history. <laughs> well, some could even say, well, today we look around the world, it's a bad time. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, there have been lots of bad times. But the time of the 70th week, this time described as the Great Tribulation period by many of the scholars of the Word, this is the worst of times. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, I've read this to you before, I'll read it again today, beginning in verse 21, says this about that time. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, it never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the, of the elect, the days will be cut short. All right. 70th week, hard times. Tribulations. Seeming success of the Antichrist. And yet, the tribulation will end. The 70th week will end like all of the other weeks in the 70-week prophecy. God's plan of history will be fulfilled. And this one, this Antichrist, will in fact be defeated. So, there's the good news. God is going to defeat, and in a correct timetable, the Antichrist and all that the Antichrist represents. So, encourage your heart with that. There's another promise, though, that we encounter in this first verse of chapter 12. The second part of the verse says, but at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. What's the second great promise? That faithful Jews will finally turn to the Messiah, the one that they rejected at the end of the 69th week of the 70th week prophecy. Now you understand this is what Daniel's heart has been all along. He is burdened for his people, wanting them to return from exile, yeah, but burdened for their hearts that they would be right with God. And what he longed for most of all was that. And now God, to Daniel and to you and I, is giving a promise that there will be a point in time in history, in the unfolding of history, where the Jews will finally turn to Christ as Messiah. And when will that happen? At that time. That's the way it's put in verse 1 of chapter 12, at the very end of the reign of the Antichrist, at the very end of the 70th week, at long last, their resistance to the Anointed One will be done. Their repentance will finally occur. In verse 7 of the 12th chapter, it says, when the power of the holy people has finally been broken, all these things will be completed there will be a restoration. They will finally repent of their rebelliousness toward God and their rejection of his provision of the Messiah. Remember, they killed the first Messiah, the first coming of the Messiah. Of course, all mankind did, and it was a sin of all mankind that put Christ on the cross. But in a special way, the Jews rejected God's great provision of the Messiah for them. But that will change. You know, this is the point of the book of Romans in chapter 11. Let me read these verses to you, beginning in verse 25. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I don't want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in, until God's plan for reaching a world is finished. And in this way, all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion, and he will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. <laughs> After the prophecy of all the sufferings for the Jews all during the 70 weeks, Daniel needed the comfort of these words. You and I need the comfort of these words. We need to know that God's chosen people will finally learn and act on the provision that God has made. Now, how do we know they've done that? Because it is only by repentance and faith in the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, that one's name is written in the book of life. 
what happens to the Jews allows them to have their names found written in the book. They turn to the Messiah. Now, there's a lot that happens with that, and they become a tool that the Messiah uses in reaching out to a lost world. But nonetheless, that's not the focus of these verses, just the promise. The faithful Jews finally return and accept the Messiah offered. God will miraculously defeat the, the Antichrist. The Jews will finally turn to Christ. What great things happening at the end of the 70th week. Join me as I tomorrow as we continue to look at more promises about what the outcomes of this plan of history will be. God bless.